Welcome to Kid Missing TV. I am your host, Angelina Wilson. Today we're going to talk about the three missing boys from Iowa. Um, they're often called the Iowa Paper Boys, although one of them was not a paper boy. Johnny Gosh, Eugene Martin, and Mark Allen. Johnny went missing on September 5, 1982. Um, he was seen with other paper boys by other paper boys picking up their stacks of papers near a car, possibly a f blue Ford Fairmont. It seemed like the person was asking Johnny for directions, but the other paper boys weren't entirely sure, and it had a loud, bad muffler. Johnny was the first missing boy in a milk carton, and Iowa Dairy actually started that. Um, there were several more possible sightings of him. One woman said that Johnny had run up to her, but a man pulled him away. Now, police can't confirm any of these sightings, but <coughs> another woman got a dollar bill from a boy which read in cursive, Help, I'm Johnny Gosh. A 12-year-old back then wrote in cursive. Today, not so much. We won't get into that. Um, his mom says a man brought Johnny to see her when he was 27. She ID'd him by a birthmark. We have no independent, verifiable information that this happened except for mom's work. I'm not sure whether... <laughs> I don't think mom would lie necessarily about it, but I do think that Perhaps she wanted it to be him so badly, you know, I, you know. <laughs> um, Noreen Gosh feels that a sex trafficking group took her son, and that's possible, you know. Um, there were these pictures that were left on her doorstep that were pictures of children tied up in all sorts of ways, and, and she said one of them was Johnny. Um, a police department in Florida said, no, we identified these children. These pictures were taken in the 70s. Um, okay. Except that the clothing that I saw in those pictures, 80s clothing, early to mid 80s clothing. Um, how do I know that? Well, I'm old. No. Uh, <laughs> no, I know that because one of the shirts that you would see is the horizontal striped t-shirt on the little boys. That was an early to mid 80s staple on boys. So, <coughs> I don't know whether they were just, I think sometimes because she's been so fervent, um, I think sometimes people may not take Maureen seriously. I know police don't. You you can't not take a mother seriously, even if you think some of her ideas are a little out there. She's a mother. She's doing every, doing and trying everything to try to find her child. If your child's been missing for 39 years, you'd be doing everything under the sun to try to find them as well. So, we can't blame her, you know. Um, There is an interesting possible sort of side um, story to this. There was um, the Franklin Boys Town scandal. Franklin was a guy who um, ran a bank. And between 1988 and 1991, boys were abused at Boys Town. They were sent to parties to do sexual favors for important people, and it was a horrible situation. In fact, for some reason, they didn't believe these boys. Um, they indicted a couple of them for perjury, which I find appalling. But, um, all because this man was powerful, in my opinion. So, there may be a connection to these cases 
um, with that scandal. Um, if you go on YouTube, you can find a video of a dateline that, that never aired, because they made sure it never aired, um, on that case. It's fairly long, but it's highly interesting. Take from it what you will, believe what you will, but definitely check it out. I will try to locate it and put a link in the description. Um, and I have talked about these three cases in tandem before on Kid Missing TV, but never by themselves so that I could really dig into them. Um, now, Eugene's abduction was almost identical to Johnny's. He was taken from his paper route on a Sunday morning, just like Johnny's. Retired Detective Raleigh says it's the only case that still bothers him. He actually has a, a giant poster of Eugene in his garage, which will stay up until Eugene is found, or he dies, or Raleigh dies, um, which I think is cool. He was on the case until 2001. Eugene disappeared August 12, 1984. <coughs> it seems like they disappeared once every two years. Uh, Eugene... The newspaper bag was found at the intersection just outside Des Moines. Um, also, he was known as Gene to friends and family. Um, Eugene's dad did not want to die until he knew Gene was there waiting for him. His sister um, tearfully told the newspaper. Uh, Interestingly, the manager at the newspaper received calls asking where people's papers were. But unlike in Johnny's case, he never called the Martins. Why? I don't understand that. I've never understood that. That's been a huge, gigantic question mark for me since I started researching these cases. Um. They said, authorities did say they're treating his case as a kidnapping. Um, they have a description of a man who was between 30 and 40 years old and about 5 feet 9 inches tall, um, clean shaven with a medium build. Ah, that describes a few hundred million people. But anyway, <laughs> it's not helpful. Um, please note, and I, and I wanted to get this in because I think it's important. Eugene's father, as I mentioned, spent the rest of his life looking for him. He passed away on December 27th, 2010, due to complications from Alzheimer's disease and colon cancer. Donald Martin served in the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War from 1963 to 1966. He earned a Good Conduct Medal, a Rifle Medal, a Sharpshooter Medal, along with the Vietnam Service Medal. He's a hero. And he deserves, or deserved to know what happened to his son. I'm sure he does now. Um, but he deserves that in life. He deserved help. He deserved a call from the damn newspaper. Um, but that was important to me to mention that because <coughs> A, it shows you kind of family he came from. And B, I know people who served over there. It was a rough service and an even worse homecoming. So I thought it important to acknowledge his service, acknowledge um, his heroics, because these men don't get acknowledged. Just like I try to acknowledge the service of my uncle aboard the USS Dias from 1964 to 1968. Um, next is Mark Allen. Mark disappeared <coughs> on March 29, 1986. Mark was walking to a friend's house the evening before Easter. When he did not come home by the next day, his mom called her own mother to see if he had gone to her house because they lived in the same neighborhood and sometimes he did that. And 
he learned, her, she learned to her shock and horror that he'd never arrived. Um, that the friend's house or his mother's house. She called the police and was told to wait 48 hours. Today that wouldn't happen. Hopefully. Um, I don't understand why Mark's friends didn't call the house or even Mark's friend's mother and say, you know, he never arrived. I'm just saying. I, I don't know if that was not a normal thing for them to do. I really don't. Um, she has told reporters she doesn't know whether her son's disappearance was related to that of Johnny, those of Johnny Gosh and Eugene Martin or not. There's no way to know for 100% sure. But police seemed less willing to help her because of the other two cases, which is ridiculous. They should have been more willing. They've now got three missing boys ages 12 and 13. Yeah, Eugene and Mark were 13 and Johnny was just 12. Um, they were just afraid of what would happen with Eugene and Gosh thing. This is what his mother said to the newspaper. I got the distinct feeling they did not want parents to be frightened to let their children sell newspapers or do different things. Well, why not, dummy? Ugh. Oh. Anyway, not her cause. Um, I believe that all three boys may have been sold, as I said, into human sex trafficking. Um, Eugene and Johnny were both abducted selling, selling newspapers. Um, I think it's very important that we keep these three cases together because I think Johnny's case sometimes overshadows the other two cases and even if they're not connected, although that seems very unlikely to me that they're not because every two years, sometimes a little less, one of these boys disappeared. They were ages 12 and 13. They disappeared from the same area. In the case of two of them, disappeared doing the same darn thing. Early on a Sunday morning. And I don't believe that a kid is going to disappear on his own Saturday night before Easter. Um, I mean, the <coughs> there are different phone numbers for. Um, each of the cases, although they're all from West Des Moines, um, but I guess they're different precincts, I'm not sure. For Johnny, if you have any information, you can call 515-222-3320. That's 515-222-3320. For Eugene, if you have any information, you can call 515-283-4864. That's 515-283-4864. Four eight six four. If you have any information in Mark's case, you can call 514-283-4811. 514-283-4811. Next time, we're going to talk about the case of Anne Marie Burr. Anne Marie's case gets attention only because she gets wrapped up in, <coughs> excuse me, Ted Bundy. But as you will see, it's not likely that Ted Bundy was her doctor. In fact, there's a different suspect, another teenage boy. And remember, yeah, remember, Bundy was honest about his crimes at the end, and he said. That yes, he delivered newspapers. Not in her neighborhood. He only had a bicycle. And it was too far away. But he did know her. There's no question they knew each other. But he was 14. She was 
like 10, I want to say. Um, so it's important that her case is out there and it is drilled home that she's not a Bundy victim. I don't believe she's a Bundy victim. Um, could he be a suspect? Yeah, there's a small chance. But I think the other boy might be a better suspect because he lived right in her neighborhood. It just amazes me that a teenager would be able to hide a body this well. She still hasn't been found. Um, I want to thank you for joining me. And I want to wish you the happiest of Good Fridays tomorrow. The happiest of Easter's on Sunday. Please try to remember what Easter's about. You know, if you don't want to hear this part, you don't have to. But for me, Good Friday is the day my Lord was crucified and Easter is the day he rose. Um, so for me, it's very important. Um, not to everyone, and I respect that. So please respect me and what I believe. Because if you don't, your comment will be deleted. Um, <laughs> oh, jeepers. Earthquake! Um, <laughs> again, thank you so much. Um, get new subscribers just about every day. You know, one or two. I wish more people that were watching would hit the subscribe button. I'm not sure what I need to do to get you to do that. It only takes a nanosecond. It's free. Um, you don't even have to hit all notifications. You just, just customize it or say some notifications or whatever. Um, click the like button, please. Not many people do that either. <laughs> um, leave a comment. I appreciate all of that and I do read all of the comments and I do reply to comments. Not all comments need a reply. Um, like I said, have a wonderful holiday weekend. Uh, 